Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. Today we're going to talk about what is potentially one of the most underutilized baits uh, out there, especially during the pre-spawn. Now there are a handful of anglers that are using this technique and they are catching tons of fish and they recognize how versatile it is and how good it is. But the majority of anglers out there don't fish this technique at all. I'd be willing to argue that the majority of them probably don't even have uh, one of these in their boat, let alone have them to the point where they're just not using them. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, I'm going to give you a little background history on this. So this is a technique that I remember came out and it was uh, several guys were fishing it in the Elite Series, Mark Davis specifically, but they were fishing uh, some Ozark lakes and catching hundreds of fish a day. It was like the fish had never seen this and it was a new concept to me, but it was quickly something that I grasped and I've started to apply all over the country and really done very, very well fishing my neck of the woods for smallmouth and largemouth. But it's a technique that uh, when I first saw it, I was like, well, I don't understand why that's so good. You know, why can't you just drag a Texas rig along those same lines? And specifically, the technique is a swing head uh, or a wobble head, some people call it. This is one of my favorites. This is the uh, tungsten model. This is the tungsten swinger by Picasso. So it's a tungsten head. They're not, uh, there's not many of these around, but I love the tungsten because I get better feel out of it. Uh, but the whole idea being here that you take, you've got a loose head and then you attach your bait onto the hook. You rig it like you would in a Texas rig manner. And then you get a free moving bait. So it's basically a football head jig with a free moving bait. Uh, the Biffle Bug, I think, was the first one that came out. The Tommy Biffle Biffle Bug. And now there's a bunch of them. There's a bunch of different variations on the market. But the key to these baits are the fact that they're heavier baits that you can fish really similar to a crankbait, right? So you can throw this out, you can cast them a quarter mile, and you can retrieve them pretty much straight back to the boat and cover a lot of water. So one of the keys to this bait is how quickly it allows you to efficiently break down areas that you're fishing. Uh, generally speaking, I personally like to fish a lot of gravel, a lot of rock transitions, big flats, maybe with some isolated grass, maybe some isolated weed. You're really trying to fish big areas that have fish that are roaming on them. Uh, you know, like a, a roadbed would be another really good type of area to fish it. But you can you can slow them down, fish them like a football hit jig, and then you can speed them up and re straight retrieve them or retrieve them at a constant pace, similar to like how you'd be fishing a crankbait. But because they're heavy, you can keep them on the bottom and maintain that bottom contact the entire time, which is critical. And not only are you maintaining bottom contact, you're also able then to determine what the bottom is made up of, which is one of the reasons why I like the tungsten model so much. I'll actually cast it out, reel it, and when you've got little shell bars, little gravel places, maybe a bigger rock, you feel it that much better with respect to the tungsten. And at that point, unlike a crankbait, if you want, you can pause it and dead stick it and let it sit in the sweet spot, which generally uh, generates a lot of bites. I've had great success doing this down in Florida on shell beds. I've, like I've mentioned, I've done it up here in my neck of the woods, fishing big giant flats with isolated rock patches for smallmouth. Uh, so it's a very, very versatile technique that you can use pretty much around the entire country. Today's video is brought to you by the Deep Dive app, which will help you select the best fishing places in the lake with features like the lake level, the current flow, the top baits tool, which will help you select the best baits for certain locations throughout the lake. Whether that's a clear water, stained water, dirty water, it'll choose the best bait for that location, provide you with all the information like what structure, what retrieve, different reel, all of the information that you need to catch the fish. This is in the app. The cool part about this app, though, is it's not just based on areas. It does provide you with specific tournament winning data that has been collected to help you figure out your best choices for baits and locations for whatever region of the lake it is that you want to fish. 
On top of that, not only does the app provide you with best locations, it gives you water clarity as well. So maybe you're on a lake like Lake Eufaula where there is a bunch of different water clarity located throughout the entire lake. This will help you identify the clearest portions as well as the dirtiest portions of the lake. Plus the deep dive app has now added the wind effect map, which is gonna take all of the different wind conditions for the past couple of days and show you what banks on the lake are being hit the hardest. They also have inflow points that show you different places throughout the lake where your water is being flushed into the lake through different ditches and creeks and rivers, providing you with high percentage places to fish and letting you know what parts of the lake are going to be the best areas after a rain. Check out the Deep Dive app to help you become a better angler. From a rod and reel standpoint, you know, it really comes down to uh, angler preference. I prefer to fish it on a pretty standard 7.3 medium heavy fast action rod. It's the same sort of stuff, maybe a light flipping style rod uh, that you'd be fishing, you know, a lot of your Texas rigs on. Some anglers out there do prefer to throw them on a little bit softer tip rod, some of your blended composite rods that are similar to maybe a uh, a vibrating jig rod because they want the fish to be able to eat it. I tend to rather have a little bit more feel in my in my bait, which means I want a faster action graphite rod. So that's what I like to go with. 7.3 medium heavy fast action bait casting rod, 15 pound fluorocarbon, uh, you know, and then your reel retrieve is really up to you. I prefer to go with a faster gear ratio reel uh, in that 7.3 to 8.1 range. And then that allows me to keep the bait moving if I want. It also allows me to slow it down if I want to. And I just got to have, I got to be more cognizant of a slower retrieve. Um, baits, I will say, are not critical necessarily, but there is definitely a group of baits that tend to perform very well on this. But what we're finding is how versatile this technique is. And almost all soft plastics can work doing this. Uh, one of the things to point out here is, your uh, generally, you know, the baits all come with a set hook. So in this case, this is a four out hook. You can buy them in various sizes, or if you want, you can actually cut the hook off, add on whatever hook that you want, which is something that I do. This is one I just took right out of the package for you guys. Uh, a lot of times what I'll do, and I've given this tip before, is I'll actually cut the hook off, attach a split ring, attach my hook to the split rig, which then allows my bait to swing freely even better, taking away a lot of the leverage that the fish can get when you're fighting them. So I personally prefer to add a split ring. The other thing to keep in mind is a lot of times if I'm changing bait sizes, I do want different hook sizes. So I may not always want the stock four-aught hook that, say, this one came with. But generally speaking, some of your best baits, like one of the, the first ones that came out, you know, like I mentioned, was the Biffle Bug. Another one that we've seen really good luck with is the Strike King Rage Menace. But a lot of your little grub style baits, so your Rage Menace. Uh, I've had great luck with the Berkeley Power Bait Pit Boss. I've had really good luck fishing a Zoom Ultra Vibe Speed Craw. Those are all great. Like your smaller craw style baits with not real big appendages generally perform very well because you keep in mind, you're going to be fishing this bait, and a lot of times you're keeping it moving. If you've got a bigger, bulkier bait, it, it's harder to maintain bottom contact, and at the same time, uh, it's just a bigger bait that the fish are, you know, not necessarily always going to eat if they hit it. So if I'm pulling a big brush hog on it, which is another bait that can work on it, uh, because my bait's constantly moving, I feel like I don't get the same hookup percentage that I do with, say, something that's a little bit smaller. When they eat this, they get this in their mouth. So those are kind of the standards. Now, having said that, I do want to point out I am a huge fan of fishing small boot tail swim baits on it, especially if you're fishing around spotted bass or you're fishing around smallmouth. Uh, absolutely killer technique to keep a minnow presentation on the bottom. That's something that is kind of a down low secret in a lot of places, but that's one killer thing. And then I also do really like to fish some of your uh, cut tail worms you know, your speed worm style baits, uh, like this guy, this is just the Zoom speed, uh, regular size speed worm. These can be absolutely dynamite as well if you want to fish a bigger worm down in those areas. Now, if I'm doing that, I'm going to probably be switching my EWG hook out 
and fishing it on a bigger worm style uh, offset hook, you know, something in that seven knot to 11 knot range if I want to fish like a magnum size speed worm. But that can be an absolute killer as well. But don't limit it right there. Feel free to play around with pretty much all your different plastics. Uh, they are an extremely versatile presentation. You can fish these baits from two feet of water to 50 feet of water. You really can fish them all over the place. Uh, your retrieve is going to be something that is critical. Personally, I like to use pretty much a straight retrieve, a couple stop and goes, mix it up a little bit. If I hit an object, I'll let the bait sit there for a second or two, and then I'll pick up my retrieve again. But I love the fact that it's a I can pretty much cross a football jig with a crankbait and have the best attributes of both. So if you haven't tried a, a wobble head or a swing head jig or a biffle bug, whatever it is that you want to call it, uh, I highly recommend going out, picking yourself up some. Personally, I think you're in a much better boat if you're throwing tungsten, just based on your bottom contact and the feel that you're going to get. Plus, if you're fishing around rock, I love the sound that tungsten gives. Uh, but check them out. Like I said, this one is specifically the Tungsten Swinger Jig by Picasso. I can put the link for all this in the video description if you want to check them out. But this is a tactic and a technique that is extremely underutilized by the general fishing public. Uh, even at the professional level, there are a handful of anglers that always have one tied on and the majority of the other anglers never tie one on. And I think that is a mistake. So check them out, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned. New video coming out tomorrow.